But we're going to keep the event going right now. So grab a bag of chips and let's sit down. Uh, up next is a longtime election transparency activist from Arizona. His group, Americans United for Democracy, Integrity, and Transparency, Audit AZ, a nonpartisan organization, has been involved with or filed numerous lawsuits that have challenged reported election results and illegal election procedures. So he's another warrior against corruption. Give it up for mi amigo, John Brakey. Well, we're getting that PowerPoint fired up here pretty quick. And we had a little problem with the projector overheating. And so that's why it took a little bit of extra time. It was yes. that. My name is John Brakey, and I am an election transparency activist. I used to be election integrity, but I started realizing after 13 years that this system really has very little integrity, so just give me the goddamn transparency, okay? That's what I want. We want elections that are transparent, trackable, and publicly verified. I'm up here to talk about solutions. What are we going to do for the 2018-20 election? What do we need to achieve to make sure that we can take the impunity out of the system? Because that's how they steal. They steal with impunity because they know how the procedures work in elections. And guess what? I do too. I'm a student of procedures. I watch them very hard. In my state, I carry a procedures manual around. And I make them follow the law, because a lot of times they don't. And the subject matter that I'm going to talk about, they're breaking the law all over the country. Because we know that these ballot images are that important to be able to work with. And I'm going to show you how the system works. And, uh, and I'm very grateful to these other activists who've come in, like uh, Jen over here. Because Jen and me have a lot in common, and Marilyn, and uh, Lori and a bunch of us because, you know, I am a social justice gadfly, and I'm proud of it. I'm the one who hangs around that department, and I use my seven C's, character, capacity, credibility, civility, very important. I call you a bad name real nicely with civility. I use my citizenship because it's our right to stand up and get the records that we want. Country, I love my country. I see it in terrible problems. You know, I have bad dreams about Trump doing something stupid and get us into a nuclear war or something. But the most important C of them all is courage. Courage to stand up. And you know, I believe that courage is contagious. And that's what I'm hoping to spread around, is the kind of courage that we need in this country. I'm here to talk about the solution to the black box is a transparent box. This is a French ballot box. It's glass. Okay? They believe in transparency. You know, uh, before I go into the slide, you know, my dream someday is to see the presidential federal election all by themselves, totally hand count, because I'm a purist. I would love to see us back to the way we were, you know, 60 years ago. But you know, at this point, it's not going to happen. Next slide, please. I'm going to do mine, too. In our country right now, we have 195 million registered voters. But that's deceiving. There's really 245 million people who are eligible to vote in this country, and 107 million people are not registered or did not vote in that last election. There are 13,000 voting jurisdictions during a major election in this country, okay? That's a lot, and we need transparency out of all of these. There are 91 million electors in our country right now that are voting on digital images. Now, first off, I need to explain to you something about what has happened here, okay? We were all in school. We took the Iowa test, and that test 
was measured on an optical scanner. And the optical scanner that did this was called Mark Sense Technology. You make a mark and it sensed it by bouncing a light basically off of it. And if it didn't bounce back, that was your vote. That was no evidence left behind. And I can tell you this because you know the largest release of electronic databases in the history of voting in the world, we won in 2007 in Arizona, in Pima County. And I had 700 databases that I spent a year or two, plus I ruined my kidneys somewhat, because you get on a track, you don't want to leave, you just want to keep it. And it was one of the most worst systems that I ever saw. And I knew the system somewhat because I was in the marine business, and the platform was, we used the same platform, Microsoft Access, in our databases and our inventory control. Okay? So I knew a little bit about it. Right now, because of digital images, and, I'll, and I'm going to show you how they work and how this thing can really work out. Right now, 45% of our country is voting on this. By the 2018 election, what it looks like to me, it's going to be at least 60%. By the 2020 election, it's going to be 85%. And you know what? Those images are ours. They're a public record. We don't need to pass legislation to get them. We may have to hire a few lawyers, and we may have to file a records request. Uh, let's go ahead and do the next slide. This is a document that's 25 pages. It has about 150 hyperlinks. It tells the story of the ballot images. It tells, because you know, I haven't got time to tell you all the things that Audit AZ, working with Ray Lutz, working with other people like Karen in Wisconsin, what we covered about the 2016 election, okay? You can read about it here in this document. And I have these handouts that on the very top, there's a hyperlink to the document, because really you're better off with the electronic version because it goes ahead and helps. Next slide. For our democracy to recover, we the people must understand and address three major issues. Election fraud, it's real, okay? Voter suppression, that's a problem. But there's a new kind of voter suppression happening. And we heard about it yesterday morning with our first speaker, micro-targeting. You cannot believe how bad much used micro-targeting was used in the 2016 primary. I sued the whole state of Arizona last year. I sued them because they micro-targeted, somebody did, okay? Uh, 150,000 people in Maricopa could, were not allowed to vote. The, uh, somebody got into the voter database and all of a sudden you thought you were a Democrat and you walked in and they said, guess what, you're a Republican and you can't vote. And that happened a lot. The results were contrary, meaning that Hillary Clinton won the vote by mail by 60%. Bernie Sanders wins the precinct vote by 59%. Then he wins the provisional by 63 There's a rule of large numbers that I learned from this lady over here, Lulu, the way she explained it, helped me understand how it works because I didn't have a way to frame it until I met Lulu. It's a real problem. So basically, we're in a situation that we have a way of being able to get. But, you know, I just want to talk about that 107 million people because, you know, uh, I know a lot of people who think I'm crazy and they wonder why I keep kicking Superman in the balls, okay? <laughs> and how I can go ahead and challenge and not be fearful. Well, I'm more fearful of what happens if we don't do this. I have to work for hope. I have to go ahead and look at my grandchildren and know that I'm part of the difference and I can see that you're here for the same reason. You know, uh, I was trying to find the words to talk about, you know, why people don't vote because, you know, it's part of the problem. And, uh, and I met this lady on the internet and we became pretty good friends, but she wrote, voting has become an act of endorsing your own systematic oppression, which perpetuates the illusion that we live in a functioning democracy. Wow, that's a heck of a statement. A lot of people do believe that. I believe that I'm gonna to try to convince people to vote. And I think the only way I'm gonna convince more people to vote, like 
Ernest Hancock, who's a well-known national libertarian with a radio show, we've become good friends, he tells people not to vote. I say, no, help me, vote. Make it hard for them to steal it, okay? And, and that's where ballot images can really play a big role. Next slide. I think we pretty much know the problems. The machines, vulnerably, the hacking, secret software, you know, uh, restrictions on recounts. In my state, you can't get a recount unless the results are within one-tenth of one percent, okay? But the really big thing that blows my mind the most when I go into an election department and I say, well, how do you know that these results are good? Well, Brakey, let me tell you. We run a logic and accuracy test before and after. I want to pull the hair out of my head. Because, you know, I worked with a great guy who used to work for NSA. He, uh, uh, we worked together for, well, still working together, even though he's kind of backed off a little bit. He's a little frustrated. Uh, he thinks it's hopeless. Well, I have to deal with hope because I know what hopelessness is. And hope is a far better place to live than hopelessness. And that means to resist and fight. These logic and accuracy tests are gained very easily. You know, as we talked about earlier, you know, Volkswagen, how big, I mean, to really understand how big this thing, what Volkswagen was, that they built 600,000 diesel vehicles that were sold in the United States that passed emissions every time, okay? But when they left, the computer changed and put out 40 times over the limit pollution. And people died over this because, you know, diesel is very bad, bad and it has brain damage and it's been proven that way. Alzheimer's could be a big part of it. That is, oh, I'm sorry, could you switch to that slide? I should have said that. It's, uh, use that little picture of Volkswagen with the gun to their head, okay, because I really blew it really bad. And that's Mickey uh, Dunahoe who, uh, there's a video in the deal, and you can hear him testify in court, explaining to a judge in a case that we won, that you cannot trust this logic and accuracy test. We have to do what Virginia Martin's doing, because that is the gold standard. That is what's done in other countries who are looking at us and saying, my God, I don't want to go insane like the United States has gone, okay? And, uh, and so more countries are switching on our lessons. Next slide, please. In Arizona, and you know, I'm gonna, if you'd like to speak the most about my state, in Arizona, a candidate or a citizen are prohibited from auditing paper ballots. In 13 years, ask me how many ballots I've touched. Only one, my own, or my wife's, okay? And uh, I've never been able to get directly at the ballots, okay? A court order has to a recount by, you have to prove fraud up front. And how do you prove fraud if you can't get at the ballots? I mean, it comes right down to it. A recount in Arizona is only permitted if the election results are within one-tenth of one percent. Wow. You know what that is? That means in 10,000 votes is that you can only get a recount. And by the way, it's going to be a machine recount only, and it has to be uh, within 10 votes or less. That's weird, huh? That's how it works. And, you know, there are other states the same way. Arizona law then requires, if you're going to do a recount, let's count it on the same exact machine. I think Einstein figured that one out when he said insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Next slide. I was part of the Fraction Magic team. That was incredible to know how Fraction Magic works. I just want to tell you a quick story. Benny Smith, incredible guy. Their voter database was attached to their ballot. And when black people went in to vote, they were fractioned to three-fifths of a human. Wonder where that came from. Three-fifths. In my country, three-fifths. We know when I heard that, it was very disturbing to find that out. Fortunately, in Arizona, we separate, and every state is different. And, and I'll have to say this, is California is on the upper scale, and I think Wisconsin is really a step above Arizona. And uh, even though, you know, people who were up there, you know, went to a conference and they tried to say how bad they were and say Arizona was so great, well, it was a right wing nut who said that. Next slide. Well, this is the good news. This guy, Buckmaster Four, was really a legend in his time. 
uh, he said something that I think is really incredible. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Famous man. A non-famous man said, <laughs> ballot images <laughs> is that model, and that's why they're hiding or destroying them. Because I know fraction magic can change the numbers, but it can't change hard copy images hand marked on the fly. Okay, and that's important, on the fly. The CU, you would have to have tremendous computer power, and plus, these are complex ballots. It's just not, like, you know, I guess uh, Stark said, gee, you know, if there's a number, uh, it was 8,800624, you know, I've never seen a big number on that, and I'll show you what ballot images look like. You vote on ballots, you make a mark, and you fill in an oval. Now, it is true, that on the machines, because these are off-the-shelf scanners they're using now, okay? This is not like, you know, let's go build a secret machine and, and uh, you know, run it. The, these optical scanners, if there is a hole in the ballot, and you don't press the switch, I know that Larry Moore with Clear Ballot went to Leon County and he did something like a quarter million images he did. And when he got back to his place, he found out what Phil Stark said. Oh my God, I forgot to turn that switch off. It filled in the bevels. And so all that scanning he did for t testing was a failure, but he did learn something out of it. Moving on, next slide. This is a digital image machine. Now, first off, uh, like I said, when you talk about optical scanners, it was optically scanned. Now we are using digital scans. So when you look at the ESMS or the Dominion, all of it, and the DS stands for digital scan. And the top one up here is the 850, and that is the uh, DS200, and they're the number one machine in this country, and they are taken over everywhere. And, and I'll say this, is that there are some bad qualities. When I was up in Wisconsin, uh, we did find something really bad. You know, I went up there and I figured out that I was going to work on the counties that were not hand counting. And of course, when I look at equipment, I look at it by how people can steal with impunity. And, uh, and I remember getting with Milwaukee, the head guy there, and I said to him, when you send your results in from the DS200, do you bring them in with a soft shoe network? Or do you bring them in with a, uh, uh, by phone modem? Or do you use SIM card? And he said, SIM card. And I go, well, I don't know if I believe that. That means he's using phone modem SIM cards just like we have on our cell phones. Perfect for an insider. Very disturbing. California's outlawed it, by the way, because you know, you'll find that in the report. Next slide. This is the 850 working right now. It does 300 ballots a minute. It actually, believe it or not, is putting a number on every corner of those ballots if they put the inkjet in. Okay? They're not. Uh, as it's going through 300 ballots per minute, it's actually taking a photo of each side of the ballot. Oh, you see that one in the top tray? It didn't count it right, so it's going to have to be cycled through and counted again. That's enough of that. Let's go to the next one. This is the DS850, and this is off the San Francisco request for information about ESNS system to the city of San Francisco. And there it is. It says the DS850 scanner produces a digital ballot image and cast vote record CDR. I'm going to show you those. That is tied together via an index number sprayed on the corner of the original ballot. What does that mean? The ballot image is married to the original ballot. Wow, how about that? That's amazing. It's like somebody planned it. Well, it wasn't the election people, it was the people who invented the machine, German bankers, who wanted to make sure they track, tracked all their documents. This is a good system, if used right, to be able to validate. Next image. This is a digital, it's not a very good copy because it's projected and sized. And, uh, and when Phil Stark was talking about, if you don't turn that switch on, do you see that little oval right there? it will fill it in and make it blank. Because so, you know, the, when you run these things through on a regular scanner, it fills in the hole and makes it disappear to, for better quality. Just make sure the switch is off. Next one, please. 
This is a cast vote record, and I should have mentioned this on right here, serial number 1433C. C stands for cast vote record. On a ballot image, it would be 1433I. You can look and you can see. Next slide, please. Now, this is an incredible document. This is my favorite. This is a cast vote record, and this one has 176,450 rows of voter re ballot results anonymously. Wow, first time I ever saw a precinct. I could sort them all by 400 precincts, and I could audit a precinct. What's missing on the function is that there should be a hyperlink to the ballot image that you can verify. Uh, this thing starts off at column A and ends at HH. It was a primary because you have 400 precincts and you could have 1,600 ballot styles. But my God, it's the best thing I ever saw for auditing because you can audit right off the Excel by precinct. Next slide, please. Uh, I'm honored to have Bev Harris call this the breaky method and it's nothing I invented, but I do advocate. We passed our first resolution with the Democratic Party in 2010, trying to get them to allow us to bring our own optical scanners to go ahead and get in and get these things. I wanna tell you what my judge said in a case. When I sued Pima County, they lied to us for three elections that said that the images were being preserved. They weren't, they were destroying them. When we went into court, I sued them. And the judge said something very profound, and I wanna share this with you. He said, Pima County, I'm not computer illiterate, but I'm gonna ask you a question, Pima County. If you take voted ballots, and you make a photocopy of those voted ballots, and then you use the photocopy to count votes, what makes you think you can destroy them? They're in the chain of custody. You're a lawyer. Right? Can't. And you know, I'm very glad that the man from Napa was here because he said basically the same thing. It is the official record. And that's what I want. But I want to use Phil Stark's method too. I want publicly verified, as Karen corrected me in Wisconsin, I used to say verifiable. And hanging out with her, she said, no, John, you got to get rid of the verifiable. It's got to be verified. And, you know, and, and then this guy over here, Tim, uh, find him. He's up in uh, Washington fighting the same battle. He's another hell of a social gadfly that's taking on the system of being courageous. Next slide, please. These ballot images could be put online by precinct because that's how you analyze results, okay? And, uh, and then, believe it or not, we could develop aftermarket software, and that's why I was very excited to hear the speaker yesterday in finding what it would cost and how we can have open source, that you could go ahead and download the precinct results, and then you download an app, okay? And then you take one image and you fill out the app, and you can watch this thing count. I've seen it done because I've seen Larry Moore's system when he was developing it nine years ago, because I've been into this for a long time. And you could turn it down so slow that you could watch it count, or you just push a button and it's all counted. Now, I'm not gonna count one race. I want all 25. That's what I want. I wanna be able, what am I trying to do? I wanna take the impunity away from a hacker. I'm a specialist in elections, and what I do is I look at the procedures, like you said in the very beginning. Those procedures are very, very important. Next slide, please. This is the request from San Francisco. The reason this is here, I'm not making this up. San Francisco wrote them and said, hey, could we take these ballot images and put them online for the public to go ahead and use to count? They said, yes. Wow, do we need legislation for this? No, we need lawyers. We need more social gadflies that are well-trained. I'm trying to put a program together, working with some people in DC, people in this room, because it's very important that my peers know what we've been doing, because to do what we're going to do, we need to all pull together, because it's going to be a tough job. But you know, it is our democracy, and if we don't wind up doing something, we're going to be in terrible shape. Next slide, please. This is a real interesting thing. 
You know, once you dig into this thing, you go, well, how far back does this thing go? How, you know, uh, gee, uh, Florida was one of the first states to have it and New York. New York, I salute New York. You know why? Because they said, we don't want those crap machines from the Help America Vote Act in 2002 that passed. And they fought to keep their lever machines because when the Help America Vote Act passed, it was $4 billion. $2 billion was used to buy this crap shit. And this crap stuff, believe it or not, didn't come with security. Oh, I'm sorry, it did. It was called security by obscurity. Don't tell anybody. Jesus Christ, don't let anybody know how bad this stuff really is. And that's what they did to us. They fought us tooth and nail, keeping us in the dark. But if it wasn't for verified voting and what they did, if it wasn't for other people in this room, uh, how many years you've been doing this now? My God. Thank God we don't quit, do we? Next slide. Well, first off, let's just go back one. Uh, when that man was here from Napa, he said something that was very exciting. Because in the original literature, it says, you know, patent, pending, and all this. It says here, ballot images for auditing and adjudicating. Yeah, that's what they're for. And they're ours. They're a public record. They are anonymous. Now, they will tell you things like this. Well, gee, if people get those things, maybe they can sell their vote. You know what I say? Then get rid of vote by mail. Because why do I need to put a mark on a ballot I can have the vote buyer come by my kitchen and pick it up, right? You got ballot selfies in your state? We do. We use ballot selfies. I have the right. Hey, I voted. See, here's my ballot. And publish it on Facebook or whatever you want. These are myths they throw out, which is pure crap. Next slide. This is a 50-state study. And once again, I love verified voting because it's so handy. And if you're not using verified voting to know your equipment, to go and do research, then you need to say, boy, I need to really start focusing if I want to save democracy because there's tools out there that we need to use. Right now, believe it or not, or is it nine states that are 100%? Hey, what if I was to tell you that the state of Alabama is 81% digitally scanned DS200s and that's what I can prove, 81%, but we don't know. I, originally, I came up with 68 because that's what the verified told me. And then my lawyer said, hey, I was just in Alabama. They had an election, John, and I think they got new equipment. Because I read something on that, and I wanted, found out and it was Birmingham, the largest county. And so now they're 81. Well, I want to file a records request. I want to ask for the ballot images for the last election. And then they're going to say to me, why would I keep those? I got the originals. That's because they're destroying them. And that's what they did in Ohio to Bob. Okay? First off, there's a, a misnomer. Listen, it has to create ballot images because it only works that way. Okay? It does not count the ballot. It counts the image. Next slide, please. Now we're down to the states that have zero. And those are the counties that have those M100s those Optech Eagles, which are crap. And so basically, we're in a situation now that if you look at this last election, okay, uh, there's, if you look at the numbers, it's quite startling. And basically, if we can somehow pull our act together, I'm hoping to put teams together of people that will be paid if we can find the funding, put in 15 states, and they're going to go in, they're going to be well trained to be really good social gadflies. To do one is to educate, two, to investigate, and three, get ready to rumble. Lawyers, <laughs> Mr. Mandamus is our friend. The Mandamus Act, I tell people, what is a Mandamus? Your Honor, could you order those asshole bureaucrats to follow the law? We don't need to pass laws. We need to enforce the laws we have. Those ballot images are ours. The cast vote record is ours. And I'll tell you, the minute they know you're going to start getting this stuff, they'll probably put the inkjet back in the machine, okay? And they're going to track it a lot more carefully. But it's about taking away their impunity. In my state, it's the vote by mail. Next slide. Other than that, 
That's what I got. And I thank you. And I thank all these great people who came in from out of state. Thank you. Because it makes me stronger being with you. Does anybody have any questions? So, um, I really respect all the, uh, especially the legal battles that you've been undertaking, John, and winning a good number of them, which is really great. We've been having a lot of trouble with the um, public records request that I did in Florida for um, Canova's ballots, and um, they did some of the things that you mentioned, for example, they have the capability to create ballot images, but they said, exactly as you said, Why say? we didn't keep them because we have the paper ballots, but could we have the paper ballots? No, we can't. So uh, we've, we've been in court now. We just, uh, we've been negotiating with them out of court for a year, and now we finally took them to court, and we're waiting to see what's gonna happen. But one of the things that I think needs to happen is to train up a whole new generation of election attorneys. Yes. And I think we have some good election attorneys here, and we need more. Um, and that's just, you know, in terms of like the dialogue that I think we're going to start to have now at the end of the day about the things that need to happen going forward. Uh, I think just if you can speak to that, like what your election attorney has taught you, and what are sort of like. What, what, yeah, so what would that process be like of sort of training a new generation of election attorneys? Keep it simple. Take your litigation straight on. Always keep on the subject. Break your lawsuits up into smaller sections. Keep the judge. Fill the courtroom with people. Put a camera on them, okay? Yeah, it does make a difference. That's what I do. You know, uh, I've been an activist all my life. I didn't realize it until I was on a TV show and it's famous. I was an environmentalist then. And a doctor says, well, Brakey's one of the best activists I know. And I go, wow, I guess I am an activist. Even though I used to run with Abby Hoffman. And um, that old, I guess. And uh, an activist acts. That's what an activist is. And I decided instead of having big board meetings, you want to meet with me? Let's meet at the courthouse. Let's go ahead and go to the Board of Supervisors and do a human PowerPoint. Let's make sure that people aren't sitting in a room and telling Ray Lutz, Ray, you could have done this and you could have done that. No, they should have been out front with you, Ray. That's what we want. That's what I train, okay? We can take it back. Listen, I'm a strong believer in one thing. A few committed citizens can change the world. In fact, it's the only thing it ever has. She was right when she said that. That's what we need. John, simple question. Is my state, one of the states that's need, that needs those 15 cadres of warriors going after them? Massachusetts? Yeah. Uh, you I'm talking sorry, to Ralph I about that? Speak a bit louder. Is Massachusetts one of the states that needs the cadres of warriors going after them? Yeah, it really does. And I'll say this, is that, uh, you know, Ralph is doing a heck of a job. Okay? He is, He's yeah. really bought into this, written some good articles. We've been working together ever since we first got together a year ago. Yeah. And, uh, and thank you for what you do. Uh, Massachusetts, I, if you look on the list that we have here somewhere, I think it's a maybe 11 or 15 percent. It looked like it was they're like getting 14. Ready for a big buy. Yeah. Yeah. Because you cannot buy the old technology. It's gone. It was. It's. It's obsolete. It's gone extinct. Digital is cheaper for them to process, unless somebody knows something different. Sure. Unfortunately, Harvard is selling paperless DREs for just sold a bunch of Well, I guess a bad buy. Somebody should stop it because I'll say this is that we want hand-marked paper ballots. And I know that, you know, sometimes they're talking about, you know, uh, putting in $6,000 pencils. What I mean by that is, is that they want to put an optical scanner in a precinct, and then they want you to vote on a DRE that produces a piece of paper that goes into the optical scanner. Now, that is so ridiculous, okay? 
First off, it's easier to go ahead and counterfeit ballots if you have a machine make them because they're all going to be the same. It's like that code, 1009. I can produce a pile of dog shit and every pile will be exactly the same, okay? No, we need hand mark, and that's what happened. Uh, instead, like I said, they want to put six of these um, DREs in and then it prints a ballot and sticks it into another machine. That's just a waste of money. It really is. You've got to stay the hand marked. I hope I answered the question. So I'm Harvey Branscombe from Carbondale, Colorado. And we are, the, we are the state that apparently brought you the Voter Choice Act, which the gentleman from Napa County mentioned earlier. We've act, that's the Colorado model, basically. There are some variations on it. But uh, there's a lot of information we have collected in Colorado that suggests there are side effects of that. I don't want to bring them up just because I'm standing here. I'm mentioning it, that that's information that's, that should be headed your way. And you need to be concerned about some of the, the options that are available with the Voter Choice Act and the side effects on things like anonymity of the ballot, access to the ballot images, the ballots, the cast vote records. In Colorado, we actually had some pretty good success, and that's largely thanks to Marilyn Marks. Absolutely, so Marilyn Marks is incredible. Thank, thank you, Marilyn. I love you. Talk, she didn't get to talk about that. But she and I records requested ballot images in an Aspen election that only uh, IRV election that was run in Colorado public election, and she was running in it as a as a candidate. Almost almost won that election, much to the shock of the locals in Aspen. But uh, we were basically methodically blocked from getting access to ballot images that already been shown to the public, actually on on the projectors, yeah. believe it or not, on election night. So eventually, the the uh, the court. Uh, decided in her favor that ballots in Colorado are public records, but then the legislature created a, a uh, access requirement that caused the ballots to become public records really only after certification, so after it really didn't matter anymore. And the clerks are actually interpreting that to mean after the recount deadline, which is even worse, that really means there's almost no recourse once you get access to the record, so it's a sore loser, sour grapes type of a phenomenon at that point. That's where we are now, but because of the audit, now the risk limiting audit actually requires access to the castle records and the ballot images. It's become a big issue again, and it's we knew it would from 2012, but now it's it's actually happening. So right. we're waiting to see how Colorado deals with the anonymity. It's, the secret ballot really means anonymity of the ballots, and there are in the Colorado model I mentioned earlier. There are many routes for processes that lead to invasion of privacy or identification of individual ballots that relate to correlating uh, batches in the, of envelopes that are identifiable to batches in tabulation and many other uh, instances like that that you guys are gonna need to learn about. So I'm just giving you a heads up. Well, anyway, thank you. Because yeah. I know that Colorado and what happened up there, I followed it and uh, anything with images I've been watching all over the country. And, uh, and I know that you also fought a battle because I guess secretly they had your voter identification on the ballot, which is just incredible. I know that with Tim uh, White and what he was working on, that's how I kind of fumbled into him, uh, was because of, uh, we were thinking about suing Washington and uh, Bev said to me, John, don't. You know who owns that system up there? Gates, not the Microsoft guy, the guy who used to be uh, I guess defense secretary and uh, and you know maybe you might want to keep away from because you might get in trouble Maybe something's gonna happen fight the battle other places They will get scared and back off because realistically they want to know how you vote. They want to know how you think uh, It's incredible this technology. It can be used for great things, but it can be used for evil And that's where we have to make sure that we're on top of it and thank you uh, for what you all doing in Colorado because I'm following things up there. I, I, I watch all over. I'm a nut. All I do is elections. We and uh, have I know how vital it is. I and I do position. believe on something that Naomi Klein says, no is not enough. We do have to go ahead and put an extra effort. Hey, you know, you put a good team together and sometimes the best thing that can happen to us is get arrested. Changed my whole counts in Pima County. The rest of they charged me and arrested me. And, uh, and the penalty I choose is that our hand count on the precinct vote went from 2% to 4%. I'll take that. Plus it changed the way they did the ballots. The problem is the vote by mail is where they steal in my state. And it's a very severe problem. And that's what those ballot images can stop.
we, we actually have hundreds of thousands of ballot images in the, in the public. I have them, and cast of records that match them. And to some extent, they, they are matchable together by, by various means, including the DS-200 actually ran in Colorado for the first time with the imprinter actually turned on in Jefferson County. So we actually have an example of that. Also. Well, you know, like I said, they have to took a switch and they have to turn it on and say destroy and they're destroying public documents listen it's against federal law do you know by the fed law that the envelope that you mail the ballot in they have to save it and they think that they can destroy the official record uh-uh we get this it's a new game to play now they'll figure a way to do it again and i'll say this you know, uh, I could go on and I could go on by vote by mail because, you know, I'm pretty sure I have a good idea how they steal there, too, and how they stuff the box. Because, you know, that Help America Vote Act, when they put that $2 billion into that voter database, by 2006, uh, the LA Times wrote a story that me and Mimi Kennedy were all over because we saw a dirty election where all of a sudden 10,000 ballots come rolling in at the last minute. And these uh, uh, scanners that they're using, a lot of times, People are not actually verifying the original signature on the envelope. They take a picture of the envelope. And this thing is so heavily vendor run, they know that if you leave California and move to New York, you register to vote, there's an interchange going on there. And the vendors just have too much power. I mean, that's why open source is important. That's why a lot of these things that we're trying to achieve to build a toolbox of elections and somehow get that cheese moved back our way rather than their way and, uh, and get that corrected. This is uh, my new friend who is an election nut. This is Ralph, uh, Tim White. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, John. Uh, I just want to say this is actually addressing the group here. Please do. There's a lot of hard work in this, but you know, it's, it's fun too. I tell you, I've had a lot of fun on this ballot image thing. It was very important. Originally, I was pro se, uh, but I have a good attorney now. One of the things you're going to find is that every state has some kind of a FOIA, a Freedom of Information Act. In Washington, it's called the Public Records Act. Yep. I think most of them, as in Washington, were not passed by public officials. They were passed by an initiative process. It's very common. And they're very powerful. And the original idea is that ordinary people can request a record from government and they promptly have to give it to you. Officials have gotten savvy on trying to find ways, usually technical ways, not to give them to you. As a result, the case that I have before the Supreme Court, I think is my seventh or eighth request because each one had to refine it a little bit different, change an or or an and, and get it just right, so that when you're ready to go, there are no wrinkles of some small compromising technicality that ends up narrowing the meaning of the ultimate result. But it can be a lot of fun. It's different in every state. It is. And, and tremendously satisfying. It so is. I just want to encourage it's people on process. that. And it's something you can start on your own. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.